This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu. Uh, well, ITT Defense Electronics and Services is uh, about a $6.2 billion uh, defense group within ITT Corporation, which is about uh, almost a $12 billion company. It's a multi-industrial company. And uh, for our part in the defense group, we tend to focus on communications, sensing and surveillance, uh, space-based products, as well as advanced engineering and uh, services to our warfighters, wherever they may be. You know, we began to see a little bit of a downturn in the fourth quarter, particularly in the commercial side of our business. Uh, with respect to defense, uh, we continue to support all the needs of the Department of Defense as well as some other agencies, and we have not yet seen uh, any kind of a substantial drop-off, which I think makes sense given that a new administration really has just come into power. Um, they need an opportunity to take time to review the budgets and determine where they'd like them to go in the future. So for now, in this year, we see actually more stability than not in the defense sector. ITT Defense actually began to look at you know, different uh, potential markets several years ago uh, and had already been trying to move into some adjacent markets or to leverage some of the capabilities that we have within the company to provide a higher level of service in the markets that we serve. Uh, we also have looked more at international markets because uh, there is a, quite a good demand for ITT defense products in the international arena. Uh, and so I wouldn't say that we have fundamentally adjusted the way that we do our strategy and our approach to strategy, but we have looked for new markets to serve. One example of that is in uh, a program called ADSB, which is the Air Traffic Control Program for the Federal Aviation Administration. Not typically a, a place where a defense company would, uh, would reside, but we uh, started several years ago to uh, you know, pull together capabilities that would allow us to compete for and win that contract, which has a lot of potential in a non-defense sector. You know, I would say that uh, we are always looking for uh, a supply chain that gives us the greatest benefit. And, you know, the globalization that has occurred in all marketplaces, I think, is equally true uh, with respect to ITT. Uh, it's a little tougher sometimes on the defense sector because of things like Buy American provisions and so forth that have typically been a part of that realm. Um, but we are always looking to increase our productivity in the company and, in fact, uh, have had a very robust, uh, you know, value-based Six Sigma uh, approach that we have applied in all of our businesses for many years now. Uh, certainly it goes right to our manufacturing processes, uh, you know, and looking for ways to try and either, you know, uh, increase the efficiency of the supply chain or to improve our processes uh, or to use new technologies to, to give us greater yield uh, for the capital base that we have. All that has been going on uh, consistently. Uh, and, you know, we have, we have tried to make sure that we have multiple suppliers for each aspect of what we do, whether it be production of radios or jammers or night vision goggles, uh, to ensure that, uh, in, particularly in this environment, if somebody has economic difficulties as a result of the financial crisis, that we will not uh, have a, a, you know, commensurate impact in our ability to produce our products for the government. All of us uh, are concerned about what is the future of defense spending. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if I were to uh, try and get my crystal ball out, I would say we would enjoy relative stability here in, uh, in fiscal year 09. Uh, I think we'll start to see some elements of change uh, in the fiscal year 10 budget uh, that will come upon the scene probably in the spring time frame after the new administration has had a chance to review it. Uh, and as you know, during this year, uh, the Obama administration will engage in uh, an exercise called the Quadrennial Defense Review, which is a top-to-bottom review of strategy to resources. And I think uh, when that report uh, goes in with the budget in February of 2010, we'll begin to see what are the big changes uh, that will be in store for all of us in 11 and 12 time frame. That being said, uh, you know, ITT has uh, finished a very good year in 2008. Uh, we think we are somewhat resilient uh, to the kinds of potential impacts that we might see in the defense arena, which are mostly oriented on large platforms uh, and adjustments in how much we're buying of the big acquisition programs. And because of the places where we tend to operate, you know, high value markets, uh, we still see a lot of opportunity, uh, even in the 10, 11, and 12 timeframe. 
you know, if you look at the priorities in this new administration, uh, they tend to focus on intelligence, surveillance, and, and reconnaissance capabilities, uh, communication capabilities, um, you know, sensing and surveillance, uh, some of the very markets uh, that we are, are most dominant in. And so I still see a lot of opportunity there. And, and when you consider that we will be bringing back forces that have been in theater for now on to six or seven years, all of that equipment uh, and, and communications equipment and sensing equipment will have to be reset uh, to get ready for the next challenge that comes along. And I think that one of, one of our goals is to make sure that we are positioning ourselves to have the best capability to reset to a higher standard uh, so that you have something better than uh, it originally was when you bring it out uh, of a reset activity. Well, we, we try and invest appropriately, uh, you know, in our own, uh, you know, investments in uh, science and technology. Uh, a large part of our company tends to do a lot of work with laboratories, uh, you know, night vision laboratories and others. Um, we do a lot of work with uh, specialized communities that deal in intelligence. And so we tend to be on the front edge of a lot of the technological developments that occur. Um, and that being said, we always will look within our portfolio, do we have the requisite capability? Can we grow it? Uh, can we invest in it? And if not, where might we go to potentially uh, buy or acquire that kind of capability which we believe is needed for the future? So we end up partnering a lot uh, with other companies, both some of the big primes in the defense sector, uh, and in some cases they're the prime and we're the sub, and in other cases we're the prime and they're the sub. It all depends on the particular product. Well, I think, you know, uh, one, it is understanding the context in which we environ, you know, the environment in which we are, are uh, existing right now. To understand, you know, what are the priorities of a new administration? What kind of things are happening globally in terms of defense markets or defense spending? Um, certainly the economic conditions that uh, face us all right now because no company is immune to, you know, the, the credit market seizures and the other things that have been a part of this financial crisis. So I think it is understanding that context, uh, building an appropriate strategy to deal with it for the future that has enough flexibility in there that you're, you know, you can weather what will be a business cycle or a defense cycle and still emerge from the under, other end of that with the right products and capabilities that are needed by customers. At the end of the day, the customer will always drive the areas that we go into and the investments that we make because, you know, that is who we serve and we want to produce the best capabilities possible for them. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at Wharton, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.